What's up, homies and homettes and everyone in between? Today we're dealing on movies we like and you don't, and movies you like and we don't. Right now on Miscast Entertainment. Here's Johnny. I love the smell of my cup in the morning. Head to the chopper! Shut up to my ear I'm gonna make it an offer again. This is Sparta! You're gonna need a bigger boat. Welcome back, you miscast miscreants, to another episode of Miscast Entertainment. I'm your host, William Davis Moore, and we have a special guest on the show today, straight from the UK, Play Content! 2017's disappointing Marvel Spider-Man, of which I've watched 13 episodes. Bear this number in mind as well as the fact this video is based on personal opinion. Is everyone powerful in this universe? Next you'll be telling me Peter Parker is spider- oh, oh wait years, that's the point. The fact many characters are superpower geniuses robs Spidey of any important individuality. And it really feels like a- here we go again. Tragic misunderstanding of what appeals to many about the Spider-Man mythos. Mulan! A young girl masquerades as a male to prevent her elderly father from fighting against invaders in the war. The cast includes Eddie Murphy, starring as very definitely not Donkey. To be fair, Mushu was first, so Donkey should be called absolutely definitely not Mushu. Oh wait, Mushu's a dragon. And in Shrek, Eddie Murphy's character loves a dragon. N not the point. Stop getting distracted, guys. Due to the release of Tim Burton's live-action Dumbo, a film that's received an average to poor reviews, I've decided to revisit the 1941 film and decide whether it's fully worthy of its iconic status. Another feature of the film I appreciate that I'll almost always praise in family animation is how artfully it explores mature or upsetting themes like parental separation, bullying, um, trains. I'm running out of examples, can you tell? Oh wait, getting drunk, that's another one. Although that's an extremely unnatural reaction to getting drunk. Although I guess I've never asked a baby elephant and a mouse what happens when they get drunk. Well, I did one time, but they didn't really answer me. Welcome to the show, Connor. Great to finally be on. The most ambitious collaboration since Infinity War, I think this. Speaking of Infinity War, we got Endgame coming up. That's going to be some epic shit right oh, there. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I was thinking the other day, like, I can remember Infinity War itself being ages away, and now Endgame's, like, a week away. I and know. Infinity War still doesn't feel that old at all. No. So uh, today we're going to be talking uh, a bunch of stuff about, like, movies we hate that people love and movies we love that people hate. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm wondering if we'll get, like, a few overlaps where we pick the same film. I, I'll bet you I got a shocker that's just going to shock everybody. But first, let's talk about you. So your your writing is amazing, man. I mean... Oh, I try. I try. Dude, your comedic timing, uh, the jokes you write, just the whole way you set up your your uh, episodes it's really unique and super playful and really freaking fun uh do you have like a background in theater or acting or anything like that uh th the tiniest bit like i've got an english and creative writing master so that's probably where the writing bit comes from oh. so finally that's that's proven to be slightly useful i was looking forward to that but i've done like a tiny bit of acting i did some when i was in university i was in like one play in university and i was in a musical theater society where they just they basically just perform in the students union it's a it's like a glorified karaoke essentially which people are paying to go to see for some reason you can hear in the inflection of your voice you know that you have definitely you know mastered something in that area <laughs> well that's good to know house and garden in poison ivy's final appearance pre the retool the credibility of her reform is challenged by a surge of botanical crimes well judged use of urban fantasy storytelling and measured use of subtle powerful horror a partnered with scenes of batman going totally unnoticed by everyone despite being in a totally open tree in broad daylight really blending into the background there bruce at uh, batman sorry i meant batman Whew. Why did you choose family content and mainly comic book stuff? Um, you dabble some, some lately, a little bit of adult stuff in there. but A little mainly, bit more, yeah. Yeah. I think I, I wanted to do a bit more of that to start with, but I think it's just the, the family stuff more people can watch, I guess. Because like with, with the slightly more adult ones, like Mandy is, for example, yeah. a lot of people don't know about that film, so that didn't get a lot of reactions at all compared to some of the more animated ones. So Mandy was one of the ones where, I, like, it stood out like a sore thumb. You know, you have like all these yeah. like, animations. Then Mandy. yeah, Batman animation, yeah. and then Mandy. Yeah. Curveball question here: 
Batman or Spider Man? Oh, definitely Spider Man. I knew it. <laughs> Without Spider-Man. Spider-Man forever. Like it's, you've been doing Spider-Man videos, I think, since the inception of your channel, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. I haven't. I'd forgotten they were game ones as well because I was just thinking about the TV series ones I did. But yeah, I've just remembered that they were video game ones. Even Shocker, who's at best a mild inconvenience in this game and in the Ultimate Marvel Universe, actually, shows his grandest achievement was inspiring My Chemical Romance's 2010 image. The game also perfectly balances energy, the cutscenes are exciting and creatively edited, and the actual missions themselves are of equal quality. You even went into some of the Spider-Man uh, cartoons that were very unpopular. <laughs> you dredged I, I didn't right into realize it. how popular, like the spectacular Spider-Man, I didn't realize, but that is like really praised by a lot of people as like one of the best comic book cartoons ever. Really? And I missed it for years. I didn't really watch it for a while. I had only seen like the the ones where they it was just overly done with his quirky attitude on the side. You know, oh, that's that's the Disney version. That I don't like that one either. Yeah. The one you were thinking of, yeah. Your analysis of that was awesome, though. I mean, the series was great. I would like to see more of stuff like that from you. Like I was thinking about doing one on Spider Man Three because I watched it the other day. Because everyone says, don't they, that they hate Spider Man Three? And I watched it the other day and. I didn't think it was that terrible, honestly. <laughs> it was a hard act to follow, Spider-Man 2. And yeah. We expected that same level of, you know, quality, and it was just yeah, so much fair. jump. So much stuff was happening at the same time, and you could mm -hmm. see studio influence, and, you know, Sam Raimi kind of wasn't there sometimes in the movie. No. You know? Nor is so, not nearly as much as, like, the second film. The second Spider-Man was... Easily, in my opinion, the best one. Oh, yeah. I Again, I hadn't seen that since the cinema until a few days ago, and I was really impressed because I did. a lot of people say, don't they, as well, that that's one of their favorite superhero films, even yeah. now. Like, some people prefer it over Homecoming still quite a lot. Really? Yeah, I definitely, I'm definitely not one of those. No. I can't say yeah. I really do like Homecoming. Yeah, Homecoming's great, and I'm sure the next one's going to be awesome. And Civil War, his introduction to the MCU was epic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, Hold on. Hold on. All right, you want to get into some some crazy movie talk? Yeah, let's do it. Are we going to do like one from you, one from me, vice, and then like that? I assume exactly do like that. Why don't you start? <laughs> okay, so the one that I didn't like, the loads of people seem to love, and I I will say it's been years since I seen this film, so I could easily change my mind if I watched it again. But I really don't like the Princess Bride. <gasps> Yeah, last going off, I did not enjoy that much. That is a bang, man. I, I was going to save it to last because I was like, hmm. But yeah, it is on Netflix, so I will rewatch it. But last time, I just did not get the same level of enjoyment as anyone I know, really. I think, like, the main problem with this, like, and this is really biased. This is personal, really a matter of taste. But sure. I don't like it when the main stories in films are addressed as not actually having happened. So, like, you know, The Princess Bride is a story that's being told. So sure. if the film knows that it's fake, I don't feel invested at all in any of the events. Because it was a story being told in a book, I'd rather have just been like The Princess Bride were real events that happened in this universe. Right, Rather right. than, you know, a fictional story. It was Peter Falk playing the granddad, wasn't it? Yeah, it I was think. like he was telling the story to yeah. the boy, and we were seeing his imagination is what was Yeah, happening. that's it, yeah. Like, and I did not like Peter Falk's acting in it much either, because he looked... I don't know whether he was actually... Was he actually that age by then, or did they put, like, old person makeup on him? I'm not sure. I always kind of felt like Peter Falk was kind of old all the time. <laughs> Already, yeah, because you can see one episode of Columbo when he looks like 22, and then the next one he can be like, exactly. because they play all at once on TV. And, and the eye kind of like made him look older. I don't know. Oh, did he? Yeah, he had like a false eye or yeah, something. Yeah, he has didn't a he? false eye. Yeah, well, yeah had, him and Sammy Davis Jr. are two people I didn't know had false eyes until recently. Yeah. But yeah, I, I thought in that, like, he was really like a cliched old man. He's like, ah, oh, Sonny. And, like, the kid was really irritating as well, I thought. And no, then there was Fred a really, Savage. like, this kind of ruins, this, this is a semi-spoiler, I guess. There's a bit where, like, the grandfather's about to read, like, a chapter about the main character's kissing. And then the yeah. kid's like, oh, I don't want to hear it. And the granddad's like, oh, one day you may not mind so much. And then at the end of the film, he's about to, you know, tell a kissing part again. The kid's like, oh, I want to hear it. How is he matured that quickly <laughs> in the space of, like, I don't know, an hour in his room one day. Wow, Connor, you missed all the magic in the whole movie. <laughs> I know. I, I might rewatch it now and actually love the film. This is totally about, like, 
that exactly what we said. You know, films that you think suck that everybody else likes. It does achieve the the criteria. It yeah. does. <laughs> it does. Because like, and the characters in the story, I kind of found quite quite boring as well. I didn't really like Princess Buttercup that much. <laughs> I can't remember much about what was the main villain called? Is he Humperdinck? Yeah, um, Prince Humperdinck. I like wow. the, the uh, well, I can't remember the actor's name, but the lead role, Carrie Alwes. Yeah, I liked his character. I didn't mind his. That's one of the bright spots. And wow. Inigo Montoya. Montoya. <laughs> yeah, they were the only two characters I think I liked out of the ensemble. Yeah, he was great. Obviously, he's the he's the meme of the entire movie. <laughs> yeah, everyone knows that line now if they haven't seen the film. Yeah. Hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Now. Yeah, there there are things. I think there's a good film in it, but I just disliked the framing device so much that it really diminished my enjoyment of the rest of it. It trips me out, bro. I mean, especially coming from you, it trips me out. <laughs> I know, because it does feel like, because I love, like, the fairy tale. But it should be one of those films I liked. Well, I think the other choices are going to be an anti-climax after this one. <laughs> Mine, uh, I'm going to boom this one, too. It's for, oh, God. For everybody watching, I did not just dislike this movie. I freaking hated it. <laughs> hated it. Hated right. it. Okay. And oh. everybody thinks I'm insane. Logan. Logan? Oh! Oh, Okay. I didn't like it as much as most people I know, but I still did like it. Usually when I say that in a crowd, I get like daggers. <laughs> yeah, because it is seen as like a super, like a masterpiece now, isn't it? like a modern masterpiece almost, people are saying. Yeah, nah, to me, um, so the guy that, that uh, directed it, James Mangold, he did The Wolverine before that, which was a movie about Wolverine losing his ability to be Wolverine. He can't heal, he can barely function. And then in Logan, you know, it's supposed to be his last hurrah, and he can't heal. He can barely function. And I'm just like, man, dude, you really want to replay this whole thing again? I mean... That's true. That's <laughs> I'd, n I'd never thought about that, because I've never really watched those three Wolverine films, like, back to back. So I always forget what happens in the previous one. Yeah, like, in Origins, it's like half the movie, he's not really Wolverine. He doesn't have the anime yeah, and claws. Yeah, just got bone claws, yeah third one he doesn't ever get to his full potential not really when when he goes berserk at the end and he actually is wolverine for like five seconds you barely see it he's running so fast through the forest you're really just getting like sound bites and like effects off camera and yeah i think like you know cinema scenes they've ruined like fight scenes like that for me because they point out how many cuts there are yeah. and how many times the camera just shakes around and you don't you never really see much in the action scenes I love Hugh Jackman, and to me, he's probably going to be Wolverine in my head forever, kind of like you know Christopher Reeves as Superman. Superman, yeah. Uh, he's always going to be that guy, you know. Like and any other Wolverine is going to be compared to him in my brain, you know. I would not have predicted that one though. If if you when you told me earlier, that's not one of the ones I was thinking of. I'm going to get hate. I'm I'm hoping that you know you guys take it easy on us in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will point out, I wouldn't say I hated The Princess Bride, but I definitely don't enjoy her as much as the majority. So what's your uh, what's your movie that you like that everybody hates? Okay, um, I'm going to go with the fourth Pirates of the Caribbean film on Stranger Tides. Oh. I, I, yeah, I really, because I don't know whether everyone hates it, but no one I know seems to like it much. Yeah, it's probably getting the most most crap out of <laughs> the, out, the all, all five of them yeah i don't think it's a better film than the one before but i got more enjoyment out of it than i did the one before so at world's end because i thought at world's end was like it could have been an hour and a half but it was like three hours and there were so many like the calypso subplot didn't really amount to much no. in that film i thought the pacing was a bit tighter in uh on stranger tides i thought the acting was as good as it ever was i thought it looked as good as they ever did I get. I know there's that subplot with like the mermaid and some other character, the the romantic subplot, and that I agree that doesn't need to be in there. If I had sure. one criticism, it would be that slows it down a lot. But other than that, I really did enjoy most of it. I didn't think it was that much of a drop in quality from typical pirates. Fair. I actually really enjoyed that movie as well. <laughs> so... Hey, oh, Ooh. that's, that's two thumbs up for me. Yeah, and I didn't really miss. Uh, like Orlando Bloom or Kira Knightley in this film. Right. There wasn't a point where I was like, oh, I wish those characters were back, particularly. Well, it would have been cool if they would have showed up so at some point just for like a cameo, which they did. Yeah, the which one. is which is what they do in the fifth film. Right. Yeah. 
Um, and I now the the whole thing's dead. So. <laughs> well, they say there's a sixth one coming, which you know, I, I, I really don't. I th- I think that would be dreadful if they made a sixth though. I think it would be bad at this point. I heard that that depths out. I mean, that's, oh right, that's the word. Oh, it might the... be like a spin off a. In in the same world, but about another character. I think they just have to let it go at this point. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I'm, I'm mine. It's hard to pick one that I like that no one else likes because when I, usually when that happens, it becomes a cult classic. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, yeah, I struggled with this because a lot of these films I haven't seen for a while either. So I'm going off like possibly unreliable memories. Yeah, exactly. Like I am on yeah the ones I've mentioned. I'm going off like possibly unreliable memories because it's been years since I've seen Princess Bride. Yeah. But my opinions on films haven't changed that much since I saw it last. The one that I found that I, I really thought everybody disliked a lot and I really, really liked was Pixar's The Good Dinosaur. The Good Dinosaur. Never watched it. Never seen The Good Dinosaur. It came out the same year as in and out and uh, Hard Act to oh, Follow. Oh, yeah. Pixar Inside usually Act, doesn't yeah. do that. They don't usually like release two movies no. in the same year. It takes a while. Usually. Oh, did they do it with Incredibles 2 and Coco? They might have, actually. I don't even think I'm right about that, but they felt close to Yeah, looking back. It was close. Maybe it was back-to-back, like, year-wise. Yeah, year after year is probably more plausible, yeah. Because they've got, like, a render farm that is probably dedicated 100% to whatever movie they're working on. The Good Dinosaur, I think, came out that year because they were going to can it. I had no idea they were going to can it. Yeah, it was in production hell for like years and it had oh, wow. gone through se- several different hands. And I think Disney just wanted to get it out there to make a little bit of mm. money back on what they had spent on it. But I don't know why everybody hated on it so much. No, and a lot of people have forgotten about it as well, haven't yeah. they? Because it's never mentioned in like Pixar lists ever. No, it's like uh, like Treasure. What was it? Treasure Island? That, uh, oh, that... Treasure Planet. Treasure Planet. That... Yes, Treasure Planet. Uh, another one that was forgotten, but a really good movie. <laughs> like, yeah, and now it's had a big resurgence now, Treasure Planet. People are starting to love it again. Disney tried to make that suck because they wanted to get away from 2D animation and move into 3D. I love Treasure Planet. It'd be quite high on, if I had to name, like, favorite. It'd be quite high on my favorite Disney films, actually, Treasure Planet. Yeah, it's great, man. It really is. My honorable mention is, oh. I'm not sure... If, I don't get a lot of response from people that even remember it or even talk about it, but Don Bluth, man, when he first started in the 80s, 82, oh. made a movie called The Secret of Nim. Oh, yeah. I've never, I've seen the so first good. half of it. So good, man. Really dark, I've been told, that one. It's super dark. It's super classic Disney animation because Don Bluth came from working from Disney he didn't like the direction the, that the company was going at the time. And that's the late 70s when Disney was going to go into its dark ages where it was like falling apart and almost went bankrupt. Uh, he left and started his own company. Man, he used old style Disney animation yeah. uh, techniques. Oh, speaking of Don Bluth, there was one that I like a lot of people dislike that I nearly mentioned, Thumbelina. I didn't realize that's quite hated until recently. Uh, I'm not sure I have a lot of experience in my brain pain with that one. I know my sister watched it when I was a little kid. Maybe my sister was a little kid. I think <laughs> I it, like, it was in, I want to say it came out in the early 90s, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm going to say like 94. 94 sounds about right, yeah. That was the year before I was born, so that sounds accurate, yeah. I, I, I was graduating high school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these timelines, man! It's been a pleasure having you on. It was great on, to fi- finally do this. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't. Just in case it doesn't get on to Miscast Entertainment merch at miscastentertainment.com. What? <laughs> free, free ad? Whoa! <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for checking out this amazing episode of Miscast Entertainment with our special guest Connor from Play Content. There's a subliminal hitting meeting there, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> As always, hit the subscribe button if you dig this episode. Ring that there bell so you get notified of future episodes. And, and hit up our merch section, miscastentertainment.com. Yes, absolutely do that. Link in the description. Connor's kicking it right now over in the UK. I'm kicking it on Bunny Day. And until the next time, people, peace. Pleasure. 
Following one marvellous scene, a project comprised of videos showing YouTubers' appreciation for, well, one marvellous scene, featured in an MCU film of their choice. I've decided to do similar, well, not similar, exactly the same. My chosen scene is featured in Spider-Man Homecoming, a brilliant addition to the MCU that cemented their understanding of the character's spirit that was first suggested during his brief Civil War appearance. Due to the analytical nature of this video, a spoiler warning for Spider-Man Homecoming is necessary. To fully appreciate the scene, its place in the film's context requires attention. Peter Parker, aka Spider-Man, see, I told you there'd be spoilers, 